Wes, what drives you to fish? I don't know. There's a lot of parts to it. I guess one of my things, I'm a, I'm a big clicker fan. Um, I just like hearing that clicker take off screaming. Um, you know, you, you got a big piece of bait out there and you got rods in gear. Uh, and one takes off, just lays a rod down. And it's just like you automatically know it's a big fish. You just don't know how big. I know you've been fishing Tennessee a lot last especially this this past year uh have you been fishing tennessee many years no i just started about a year and a half ago um my first trip up there i went out with todd asher and uh been going back ever since yeah i noticed uh todd asher he's he's taking several people fishing is is he a guide up there he sure is i think he's not no more you know he's kind of retired semi-retired but i think he tries to fish for fun now more than anything you normally pull big baits up there for those big trophy stripers? Biggest we can get. I notice uh, you catch a lot of big stripers. Is that what you're targeting, uh, trophy stripers, or are you just, just striper fishing in general? Well, 99% of the time I'm fishing for big fish. Uh, you know, I've, I've taken my wife up there a couple of times. Um, you know, and, and we go out on those trips. We get down below the dams and do what they call bull fishing. Uh you know, I'll go up there then. I'm just trying to catch fish. We're trying to catch fish for, you know, certain people on the boat. But most of the time when I'm in Tennessee, I'm just targeting big fish. You know, if you can't catch a big fish, I'd just rather not catch nothing. You know, just me personally. Do you, um, do you troll really slow for those or you go up to like a mile per hour? How fast do you troll when you're pulling big baits for those big stripers? Well, in most cases, we troll about one mile an hour, give or take. Um, if you do, there's a technique, what we do call, some people call it surfing, where you're going with the current. So sometimes you might have to troll upward two and a half, three miles an hour boat speed just to keep your boards out, you know, to pull your bait with the current. So it looks more natural. So it kind of all depends on where you're fishing and, you know, things like that it comes into play. I noticed you got a pretty good sized bait tank out there. Do you, uh, keep bait here at home and take it with you? Or what do you use that bait tank for here at the house? Yeah, um, I just really got into that about maybe a year ago, uh, and I was having trouble keeping a lot of bait alive. You know, it lived two or three weeks and die. So, um, you know, I got this big tank now. I got a 750-gallon tank, and I got with Scott Perry and Drew Rankin, um, you know, and uh, Sid Robb. I think a few people on here probably know Sid Robb, you know, and they really helped me as far as how to set this tank up, what to do with the bio filters, and, um, you know, just... It, there's a it's not rocket science but it is a little bit different than what people think it is but um yeah i just keep trying to keep bait here now so when i get ready to go fishing i have it on hand i noticed uh i saw where you were talking about uh you keep some type of live bacteria in there you got some system that keeps that bacteria stabilized well i'm still learning about that process too um uh i think in the summertime um you want the bio to build up in there, and that helps, from my understanding, it helps kill the ammonia in the water so you don't have to do water changes um, or do as many water changes. Uh, I did a video the other day that's talking about the algae, and the algae is actually a good thing. You know, some people keep their tank spotless. Some people, you know, you'll look at some, I've been to some bait shops, and they have a lot of algae in the water, um, but they say that's actually good for the fish. And from my understanding, the gizzard shad actually eat the algae. Um, I have noticed in my tank, a lot of the smaller fish are kind of hanging out now toward the look like they're kind of picking something off the wall. So, but yeah, this whole process, I'm still learning it, how to keep bait, but you just listening to people and it's been, been alive out there now for about two months. So, um, you're, I, you're perfect fishing trip. Now I've, I know you said that, uh, you love the sound of that clicker and that, that fish pulling that drag, you know, coming tight with a good fish and just the sound of it peeling line off the reel and, but the idea of uh, the perfect fishing trip, you pull up to the boat ramp, what's the weather like? Are you fishing a river, a lake, a reservoir? You know, what would be your ideal, if you were able to put together the perfect fishing trip, what would it be? That's a good question. Uh, I don't know. I've had quite a few. Um, I'd have to say just this last trip, um, we went, went to uh, Chesapeake Bay with Jeff Peel. He invited us up there, me and Todd, and uh, 
those conditions, it was just amazing being out on that large a body of water and knowing the fishery, knowing the fish is there. You know, the water was, if I'm not mistaken, about 45, 46 degrees. Um, as a rule of thumb, those fish are usually gone up there this time of year, but from all the hot weather, they just decided to hang around. I think we still kind of got in on the, the butt end of it. Uh, but that trip was was kind of special to me. Um, i tell you what I thought really was amazing was I did a live video of me catching a fish. And about two hours later, Michael Walker was on the phone. He was fixing to book him a plane, get him a plane ticket to come up there and fish. And at first I thought it was kind of a joke, but there he was the next morning. You know, I mean, there's just something about these fish, certain people. You know, you got a lot of people that striper fish on here and like it. You got a few people that love it. Um, and, you know, it just it gets in your blood. Uh, but those conditions up there were amazing. Um, being on Jeff Peel's boat in that cabin will run you. You know, you have, you can go in there and stay warm till the fish gets on. You go out and catch the fish and then you're back in where it's warm. But the, I, I like cold conditions. It's probably my favorite. Uh, spring is okay when you're, you know, spawn fishing for them before they, before they spawn. But I'm a really cold weather fisherman. If I had to choose, I'd take the cold weather. Okay. Um, I noticed... You told me earlier that you'd gotten some rods from uh, from Big Cat Fever. Uh, love those rods. That's probably my favorite rods on the market are those Big Cat Fever rods. And I know they've got the Striper Stealth rods. And, and I was just going to ask you, how did uh, all that come to be? How did you get those uh, when you come home that day and those rods were on your porch? Uh, how do you think that that uh, actually came to fruition? Well, Tony Caton had contacted me uh and we were talking about, um, you know, they were trying to design a striper rod, uh, you know, because for the way they did the big cat fever rods, you know, awesome rod. Um, and they wanted me to try one. So he sent me, actually, I think it was two, I think he sent me a heavy and a medium heavy. Anyway, there's two different striper stealth rods and, and, and I did a review on the rods. I took them. I couldn't review them until I caught fish on them. And I think for what we do, like down at Russell, those rods, they're great rods. Striper stealth rods are great rods. But for what I was doing and for what I do, you know, I'm a big cut bait fisherman. Um, and I just liked a little bit heavier action rod. I tried a rod out for Tony. You know, I told it was honest with him. I told him what I liked. It was a great product because I had bought some. I purchased some. And he gave me some more. It's, it, it, it's helping them, but it's also to help other fishermen out there that, you know, that's just getting into this sport or, you know, what they're looking for. If they want to try something, you know, and hell, everybody knows. I'll sell some shit in a minute. I'll buy it this week. If I don't like it, I'll sell it. I've just always did that. But I come across these rods, and it's actually the longest thing that I've ever used. I've held on to these big cat fever rods. You know, I love them. They do everything you want for the money. It's the best, you know, it's just the best product out there in a rod to me. You know, there's so much stuff on the market now, um, you know, and everybody's pushing this and pushing that, and this is the best, this is the best. Um, I'm just putting out there what I like and what's worked for me, and, you know, it's the way it is. I'm assuming your favorite fishing is probably striper fishing. So what would be second place? What would be your second favorite species to target? Well, freshwater, I'd say catfish. Overall, I would say tarpon. Um, I've only caught one tarpon in my life, but they're just they're an amazing fish. I've actually been looking at a show right now on TV, tarpon fishing. Um, if you've ever caught one or if you ever watch videos on them, the acrobatics, what they do, they're just... They're probably the most amazing fish in the world to me, besides the striped bass. It's a pretty noticeable difference online and, you know, just doc talk, talking to, to cat fishermen and, and striper fishermen. Uh, do, you, do you notice the differences in striper fishermen, per se, or cat fishermen or any other fishermen? Is there a, you think there's a big difference in the culture? Like if you were to run into a, a guy at the boat ramp, start talking to him about fishing, would you be able to tell right away what he targeted, whether he's a striper or a cat fisherman? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, I guess the biggest giveaway would be the boats. Um, most striper fishermen have their boats set up a certain way. You see a lot, of cer a lot of center console boats. But now you're actually seeing a lot of boats, per se, like Jeff Peels. You see a lot of guys catfishing out of these deep V boats that's enclosed. Um, but, yeah, per se, most of the time you can tell the difference in, in what people target. Uh, to me, the difference in the cultures, I think, is you've got you've got a lot of guys, a lot of, a lot of striper fishermen that'll tell you real quick they don't give a shit about a catfish. They're slimy. They're nasty. You catch them, throw them on the bank. Me personally, 
I grew up catfishing. My first fish I ever caught was a catfish in a pay lake. I grew up catfishing is what is kind of what took me to a different level to where I actually like to fish. Um, I do still like to target catfish. I'll go to Santee Cooper when I want a catfish. I go to Tennessee when I want a striper fish. Um, if I had to choose, I would choose striper fishing. But you know, the cultures are they're, they're you know it's kind of like I don't know if Jr. probably noticed, and I'm sure a lot of people have. In, in a year, you know, catfishing was just kind of like on the DL. You didn't see a lot about it. And it's like all of a sudden, it just blew up overnight. And now, you know, a lot of the striper fishermen, you know, we, we laugh about it. But there's more drama in the catfish world than there ever was in the striper world. So I guess that's a good thing. You know, that means that sport is really taking off and more people's doing it. So The Stripe Bass Challenge. I noticed you were there this year. And uh, I went down there, filmed it, made a video about it. And... Uh, if there was a, is there anything that you think they could change to better the tournament as far as, um, oh, I don't know, uh, like I know a lot of people were complaining about there wasn't a lie detector test, and uh, it was on Lake Hartwell. Would you like to see it on another lake on the Savannah chain, or do you like it being on Hartwell? And what are your thoughts on the, the Stripe Bass Challenge just in general as a whole? Well, my hat's off to Mike Dillon. I think it's a great thing. I was glad to get to fish it this year. You know, you know the food, the feeding the home. I mean, they help so many people. And, you know, and, and the biggest reason I, I wanted to fish it this year, I don't really care about fishing Hartwell no more. It's my home lake. I live. I'm 35 minutes from the closest boat ramp on Hartwell. I, I just there's no interest in me to fish it. But that tournament, you know, it just kind of brought a bunch of people together. It brought a bunch of striper fishermen. That there again, I met people this year that I've talked to online for years through Facebook, but never got to meet them. I met them at this tournament. Um, you know, and, and, and there was a lot of stuff. I made some posts about it, and I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one. My only issue was when you've got first place $25,000, I think second place was... I'm not saying that. I think they should have given a lie detector test. I mean... There may be some reasons that I don't know or other people don't know why they didn't, but I just can't see why a lie detector test wasn't given on a tournament with that kind of payout. But other than that, great tournament. Um, it just brings people together. You know, uh, can, you, can you pause for a minute? Hello. 